Many years ago, my wife and I bought a house, and the house was in a bad condition. It had been empty for four years and needed a lot of work. But the good thing about this house was it had a very large garden, large enough to put a seven and a quarter inch gauge railway around it. So in 1996, a couple of years later, after I'd completed a lot of work on the house, I set to and built this engine. It's a seven and a quarter inch gauge titch from the Kenyon Brothers drawings. And it's a very simple engine, it's nothing fancy, but it's very good for running around the tight curves. Also, during the time of building this locomotive, with the help of a very good friend of mine, we laid the railway. The railway is 400 feet long, and it's seven and a quarter inch gauge. At this point, for any miniature steam enthusiasts watching, I'd like to discuss one or two of the design points. It's not quite what you see. It is based on the Kenyon Brothers 7.25 inch gauge modification of the LBSC Titch engine, but it's very different. The cylinders are sweet pea cylinders, cast iron sweet pea cylinders, obtainable from Blackgate's engineering. The web address is on screen at the moment. And the valve rods are made from 316 stainless steel. And the best thing is, I found some ball racers which were quarter of an inch outside diameter and one eighth internal diameter. So on most of the moving parts, there's actually a ball race. Not on the main coupling rods and not on the connecting rod, but just about everywhere else. And it's really worn very well indeed over the years. The engine's called Ken in memory of my father who died a few years before I built it. Three or four years after building the engine, my work got really busy and I had to put quite a lot of time into the job, so I didn't have much time for running around the railway. Subsequently, the engine spent about 13 years sat on the edge of my workbench in my workshop, just gathering dust, and the railway fell into disrepair. It got very weedy and it needed re-ballasting. Recently, I've had to do quite a lot of work on the house, so I thought, right, at the same time, I'll renovate the railway. So once the railway is renovated, which it now is, I can look at running the engine again. The first thing I did was to give the engine a hydraulic boiler test, which it passed with flying colours. It's a very good boiler. It was built by a friend of mine, a professional boiler maker. The first thing I did after the hydraulic test was to steam the boiler and immediately blow it down. This got rid of any residue that was sat about in the bottom of the boiler. I did of course put the fire out and make sure the pressure was down to about 20 psi before I blew down the boiler, as it's never a good idea to blow down a boiler from too high a pressure. As you can see, the engine is fitted with a pair of injectors. The black injector works fine, and it sounds beautiful. The red injector has always been problematic, and I don't think it's the injector at all. These are made by Jubilee fittings and they're really great things. These are number four injectors which are ideal for the type of flow that I need. When they're working okay. The red injector is okay really, if I swap it for the black one it works fine. It's just the way that the red injector's piping is rooted. It goes around too many corners, so I'm going to pipe it more directly and generally change the plumbing. I went a bit mad at the time with the plumbing as you can see here. It looks like a musical instrument. I even changed both of the clacks on the inlet to the boiler, but all to no avail. This injector still does not work properly. Once the engine is running 100% successfully, you'll see in the next video both the injectors will work. For the moment I've only got one injector. The cylinder lubricator works too well, it always has done, and it's really good, and I get oil all over everywhere. But it oils the cylinders very well indeed. And I put an extra tank on it as well, so I don't have to fill it quite so often. This lubricator has never given any trouble at all. It's been perfect since day one. A quick look at the fire, and a quick poke of the fire shows me that it's in very good order. This boiler steams very well indeed. It's one of the best boilers I've ever had. It was built by a friend of mine to a very high standard, copper and silver soldered. And a lot of the time I have to run with the fire hole door open just to stop it blowing off. After about an hour in steam, with plenty of water being put through the boiler, it's time to let the fire go out, let the pressure drop, and blow down the boiler. As this is a copper boiler, I generally would not blow it down, but I'm trying to keep it clean. 
and I do see some slight particles of white residue in the gauge glasses, but it's getting better the more that I blow it down. Here I'm also draining the side tanks. That's about it for now. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful and keep your eye out for the next video when I'm actually running it round the railway.